Ja. Und auch, dass das äh, also ein mhm. Propaganda-Video ist genau. von denen. Ne? Mm. We told you about the project uh, which failed. It was in Leeds. And uh, just to, um, to tell you what was it about, we were invited. So in, in the United Kingdom, there are a lot of urban um, renewal, renewal projects. So new urban villages where, uh, are going to build. Yeah, yeah. But it's all over, all over the United Kingdom. They really pull down uh, neighborhoods, uh, poor neighborhoods, and push uh, really fancy uh, new, they call it new urban villages. Um <laughs> and we were invited by an uh, architecture uh, office, or do you say office, yeah? Um, and they um, told us about uh, an area which uh, which is kind of a poor uh, and deprived area and they have difficulties between two areas and they uh, wanted uh, to re revitalize uh, an old viaduct 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 which is uh, not working as a via as a train viaduct anymore and yeah if we can do a project within this uh, deprived neighborhood and uh, we we accepted and we did a re research on leads and on the on this neighborhood and uh, during the course of the project we realized why they were really inviting us and that behind them there is another <laughs> comp a real company a public private partnership called Yorkshire Forward who are the de developers of all these uh, new rich uh, neighborhoods so we were uh, really under an un uh, other we thought we were there invited for another purpose but slowly slowly we realized uh, uh, that but, uh, um, we we really um, where our office were situated on the edge do you say on the edge between this new chic uh, posh uh, area and a very 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 deprived area it was really, really kind of really sharp uh, edge and uh, it was really and and they wanted also to uh, demolish the next neighborhood just to get more space to uh, build a new thing and they uh, when we talked to the people they, sa they said yeah w the, there is kind of an enemy between these two uh, neighborhoods and the the new urban uh, village which was um, about a cluster of um, creative industry like there were uh, offices of designer architects but also the telecommunication and so on and they wanted to uh, reach the people in the uh, deprived neighborhood uh, just maybe they can have job there and they sent out a leaflet yeah. which was kind hey we you come and uh, visit us uh, but most of them didn't even uh, uh, speak english but arab and so it reached no one and we tried to connect um organizations, uh, mostly social organizations, working, for example, with the illegal prostitutes in the deprived neighborhood. Uh, they, uh, for example, there was one artist who did an exhibition with the uh, illegal prostitutes. Um, and the sex worker. And uh, the, the sex worker wanted so much to have a catalog, a book out of this um, exhibition. and since there were designer and graphic designer, we connected them uh, to the to the graphic design um, office in the new urban village with the organi organization and the sex workers who did the exhibition to produce together uh, a book or the homeless organization together with the Royal Institute of Architecture because <coughs> with we thought maybe it's also an issue which could be interesting for architects to think, start to think about homelessness. And it really worked, but once um, the, um, those who invited us realized what we um, did, namely bring the poor people and the prostitutes, they started to whisper, the prostitutes, into the new uh, urban village. It was kind of, th they, they wanted to stop us. Um, 
uh, to go further, but um, they um, commissioned a filmmaker to make a documentation, and this is this is funny because this documentation is like wow, what a good project. <laughs> But in real, they wanted to stop us. So uh, we thought maybe uh, it's kind of, yeah, it was our fault because we didn't really research uh, why did they invite us and, and what's really going on there. And so this is so contradicting, yeah, this, uh, this um, video w which was uh, made by a filmmaker who was uh, accompanying our project and process <laughs> so we w we decided uh, to show this short video and we can also do a nap <laughs> <laughs> pretending you're watching the video this is me <laughs> some years younger <laughs> Not only paintings <laughs> or music or sculpture is accepted as art, but also social organisms, social, social, social sculptures. The methodology is uh, rapid immer immersion, so that means that they very quickly uh, immerse themselves in a, in a place and discover many, many things that other people have not seen, although they might have been here for much longer. Extremely interesting process. Through being accepted as a group of artists, being invited to a city like here, Leeds, uh, given a budget for the work, we are in a privileged situation of coming here using all these networks, using all this support and I should give a kind of impulse for a positive development within the social field. I suppose the original aim, it is you know, the project that commissioned this work is the, is the Viaduct, it's the disused Viaduct project, so we were commissioned under that uh, project and the idea was that through the work we might be able to develop a more clear idea about what the product could be. Is it just a, a, a divide or could it actually be a connector? The product travels across from city centre to uh, Elland Road practically and crosses a number of communities which are completely disconnected from each other so it has this very symbolic role of a connector. So really the main purpose of the project was to find connections, find social connections and to make sure that when the whole Begavan village uh, is complete, that it doesn't become a gate to community, that we can establish uh, profound, strong, genuine connections. Six years ago I've been to Leeds, and I've been very astonished when I arrived now in, in 2006. The city has changed a lot. I can see all these developments going on. It seems to be booming here, you know, uh, the center of the city seems to be very rich. Some of the communities which are affected by these developments have a very hard time to get hurt here. They are exposed to these developments in a way that they can watch all these towers growing and they don't see uh, a positive change in their community, in their areas where they live. They don't get communal spaces. They don't get uh, the things like healthcare facilities, like sports facilities they would love to have. Well, they feel very left out, actually, uh, because there is packets of money, tons of money going into the city centre, and they're knocking down flats and building new ones, and I've got people in council houses that have not had any work done to them, and what we've got to do is turn it round so that families want to live again in Holbeck and Beeston Hill. There is a a strong desire amongst local people to um, increase the, um, the, Im the pride and the image and the mm. belonging in, in, in the area. Yeah. Um, there is a, a really, really strong sense of that, it's especially in the past year when you know there's been a number of negative press articles, to say the least. What's happening now as we begin to regenerate the South is that we are beginning to get rid of and wipe out the very, very things uh, which were very unique to that area and which every city needs. Everything that happens is, is actually based on 
on, 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 on people who have got a lot of money. To see how prosperous the city is, you look at the number of cranes. The more cranes are, you know, you're all right. We've learned also about the fact that uh, from Holbeck and Beeston, Beeston Hill, they have a wonderful view here to this development. Uh -huh. yeah? And a lot of people also uh, perceive this as uh, uh, something that they don't take part in, of course. I think they were quite open. They don't were only afraid. They said, on the one hand, it is an opportunity because infrastructure mm -hmm. will come to the city. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they've, they called it kind of a social experiment. Mm -hmm. One of the council's missions is, is to narrow the gap, mm -hmm. effectively between the rich and the poor in the city, which, um, uh, and in, in Holbeck obviously that's important, but there's another gap in Holbeck, and it's the physical and psychological barrier um, of the viaduct of the M621. It's the inner ring road and motorways that killed Holbeck and Beeston. Viaduct wasn't any harm at all. It's the motorways that have specifically yeah, cut off. Yeah, yeah the, the and whole... lots of people mentioned more the highway as a border. And the value of this was something not seen as a no, I don't see it as a barrier and also uh, I don't I don't feel that they see it at all. The viaduct was not really the central concern of the project, but there are absolutely obvious reasons for it, now that we begin to analyse what actually happened. The reason is that the viaduct is not actually perceived by anybody who at the moment lives or works in Holbeck as an as a, as a issue, as a, either as a barrier or a connector or anything. So in that sense, the project focused more on the connections between Holbeck and the village and the existing community in Holbeck and uh, Beeston Hill, which is absolutely right, because this, this is the existing community that will be most affected by the development of Holbeck Urban Village. And some fantastic uh, conclusions are coming out of those uh, consultations, and I think it's going to give the whole of the uh, regeneration of Holbeck Urban Village much, much greater substance. And I know their initial, initial remit was to talk about the viaducts, but I think they realised with conversations with people like ourselves that actually there was more work to do in connectivity rather than uh, a viaduct. We met uh, Hamara Centre, which is a community centre in Beeston Hill. And we also talked to the local Beeston History Society. We met the crypt. We also met people from the big issue. So next care centre, the young people. Yeah. We met people from Genesis. The Simon community. We met at the Holbeck uh, Gala, we met a great number of people. We also met people who want to uh, who do a campaign against for the refurbishment of the South Lead Sports Centre. They did know how to talk to people and they did listen very well to what people said and I think they'll do good. If their plans come about, they will do good. So this is a great number of meetings and I think through these meetings a kind of network is really developing Already, yeah. which is at a certain point obvious to the people we meet. And this is the mm -hmm. thrilling point I think mm -hmm. that they are surprised because we are here only for three weeks now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think out of this certain things become possible which would not be possible without creating the, uh, this kind of fertile ground. Mm -hmm. There needs to be actually shared projects on the ground where you know both communities have taken ownership of of whatever. I think that's a really important, really important uh, uh, part of it. So we want to build up a network um, between different communities that they get in touch with each other on an individually uh, basis. Mm -hmm and that um, it maybe what should come out of it is kind of a snowball effect that people are more open to the uh, view of the other one and to the thoughts of the other one and to the problems of the other one. Because of the needs from both sides, that's the idea, we we'll try to set up projects which are based on meeting mutual needs, so it's not that it's about a win-win thing, yeah? it's not about that one helps the other, yeah? it has to be equal. Mm. Um, we have several organizations, institutions and individuals asked to uh, be partner of this pool, which means uh, organizations of Holbeck, Eastern, Eastern Hill, Holbeck Urban Village, 
Do you think all those partner, partners agreed uh, to be partner and that means that they, um, <clears throat> once they are requested, will contribute their time, their skills, whether their times or their skills or material, just for temporary small joint projects? I think the benefits for us are that we get to be involved in a, a kind of an interesting project, uh, something that we wouldn't ordinarily get involved in. It highlights all sorts of cultural and uh, social issues that aren't things that necessarily come to the table in, a, in an easy fashion. The most important thing is to take very small steps, very, very small steps. Mm -hmm. It seems to be like there is no difference in the beginning, mm -hmm. but really you have to build up a, a new trust in these people, in mm -hmm. uh, creative industries like here, yes. for example. They have to get in contact with them on an individual basis mm -hmm. to say, okay, these are also humans, they, mm -hmm. they are not better or yeah. other or whatever, they are also working here mm -hmm. to get some money and mm -hmm. that's why we sort of trying to take really the very, very basic step. So there are various number of different concrete uh, projects we could see as possible developments, but at the end, of course, people who live here, people who are caring and, and, and having these needs, yeah, are the ones who will realize it. And so this is, uh, like as, uh, with all uh, Wochen Klausur projects, it's really one of our important aims to, to uh, put the structure after our, into the site, into the place, after uh, our, our, our residence here. We need to find a way to support all the individual subtle, you know, uh, small projects that Van Klaus are developing at the moment and build on it. It's, it's, a, it's a process that can be infinitely expanded and it is meant to be long term and it's meant to be 20, 20 25, 30 years, whatever it takes. Uh, so it must be allowed to die. I think that's the main thing. And I think it's very essential for a city with this kind of culture, like Leeds, that they take care of the people who have been living here for generations, uh, the fathers, grandfathers, grandgrandfathers have been contributed a great deal for the wealth of the city. And so I think it would be a very good idea to try to not only establish Leeds as an example for a wonderful, prospering, economic city development, but also to establish it as a wonderful example for how to deal with the existing communities, how to develop a kind of relationship between the communities and the development in a way that they can both learn from each other and that they all have a communal, mutual future. I mean, I must admit, when I first heard about it and they talked about art, I did think we were going to get a lot of artifacty people coming and wanting to do murals all over Holbeck, you know, to tell us how good we are. But I think this is a totally different way of looking at things, and I don't know if it's a solution, but it could be part of the solution to get us all working together. I think the true impact will be that the city has a chance to grow and become much more sophisticated in the way uh, that we understand processes and the role of art. It's, it's already, Leeds has already shown that it has become much more refined and sophisticated by commissioning this work. I think it's an extraordinary moment in time for Leeds. Uh, you have to have a high level of uh, understanding to be able to take the risk of doing something like this. It's, it breaks new ground. Uh, so I think that it's, it's cultural growth. No, for, for Leeds it means that we are, we are growing culturally, which is a really good thing. She was the one who commissioned us and invited us. And uh, as, as uh, we told you, sh she was telling us that this viaduct is dividing the communities. And she mentioned it in the middle of uh, uh, this film. We, we didn't uh, get it proved that this is really a problem. She she promised us in the pin beginning uh, that we can walk along this or on this viaduct to see 
the two communities, but there was only one, one side community and then the other side was nothing. It was kind of nothing. Yeah? And we realized that this is no problem, uh, but she wanted to have this a uh, problem to get uh, her revi revitalization uh, financed. <laughs> and so she was really kind of disappointed when we were walking around and saying yeah, this is no problem there's another problem which is uh, the, the highway which is really dividing uh, the community but your viaduct is uh, nothing of interest i mean uh, so there are really complete different problems between other communities and uh, even if she was uh, talking about how wonderful uh, this was <laughs> she was really uh, it was. Uh, she didn't even want to pay our our flights. Uh, I mean, they invited us a second time to yeah. present it at the uh, uh, um, Henry Moore Institute, and then she wanted to pay us the flights because she was really kind of uh, w maybe she didn't get the the auftrag, the commission, commission. and blamed us. Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But this was really. Yeah. Institute, we, they still uh, pretend that uh, yeah, this will happen and everything is fine, and so we were presenting it as if it would start soon. Yeah, but uh, only when we came back then again to Vienna, they said this will never happen and we don't support this project and we want to stop it. So. And how long did it take for you to understand now uh, what was the real situation? I mean, quite a uh, time. Uh, yeah. It's not really until now, it's not yeah. really clear. clear. Yeah. We only, I mean, for me, <coughs> I was always thinking what they wanted to have is some kind of an advertising campaign yeah. for their for the revitalization of the viaduct, um, so that they are kind of trying to use us as artists to spread the word and they yeah, are doing some fancy, nice project and then they, yeah, you know, that's what they understood as participatory project, maybe. And when they realized uh, how our working procedure really is and that we are listening to people who are living there, yeah. then they started already to... I mean, it was kind of strange already when we came there. Yeah, because they didn't provide us the office from uh, the first moment. And we, we are really depending on, a on an office where we can work and where we have internet. And it was kind of one week. Uh, that they told us, yeah, tomorrow, 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 uh, but it uh, never uh, got in, it never happened. And um, I mean, another reason was, and we found out that um, you have this, um, for this developing thing, uh, they have the develop the budget, uh, I think 0 0.1.05 or something like this has to spend, uh, has to be spent for communi community projects. And so they, th I think the Google social artist Wong uh, Glasur, yeah. let's invite them. Maybe they do a nice sculpture or something like this. Yeah. <laughs> and they they showed us uh, first day around, and they were come kind of, um, yeah, uh, uh, art in public space, like like a, sh a sheep with blinking eyes. And so and they They're maybe they, they, how they nice, nice it is, it is <laughs> and maybe they they wanted us to put also some kind of a sculpture there or so. But the main thing is that they had to spend this 0.05% um, uh, uh, of the budget of developments for community uh, art. We could have found it out if we had uh, better researched. But still then we would have think, uh, thought maybe they really want to do something um, new, new and effective. effective. Uh, yeah. And I, I remember when uh, we were invited to, uh, in the middle of the project, when we were invited by Yorkshire Forward, then we already um, knew that they were the real uh, commissioner uh, to present what we have done uh, in the meanwhile. It was, you know, in the top uh, of one of these uh, fancy new buildings. <laughs> and it was uh, re really surrounded by, by windows, by glass, and it was a real big round table, and the people were all sitting... Uh, 20, no, not 20, but 15 or so, um, around the table. And we got our presentation from here with a table and with a thing. And they those who sit with the back to us, they didn't even turn around when we were presenting. Yeah? <laughs> 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 they, they said, like, 
Yeah, when is when uh, even uh, so the most uh, critical thing was that we work together with uh, with the illegal. Um, um, sex workers. We have may maybe to mention that um, I think this still is uh, working. This um, antisocial behavior order. This is a thing which is incredibly. Uh, it's it's in uh, in the UK. You can get a so-called ASPO. This is called an antisocial behavior order. If someone uh, thinks you act antisocial the police uh, can um, can can uh, give you an order without a, a, a trial yeah, or without 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 trial. any without trial coming to the yeah. judge and this is incredible because for example you see 12 year old kids with uh, this electronic uh, tech food tags with a map of the neighborhood and there is a blue line and it's it's the only where they are allowed to uh, uh, to walk and if they step aside in another alley they get again an espo but you know these kids are the one we we she had a blue uh, black eye but because she had a catch with the police she was 12 years old at this day mother is an alcoholic father is in prison uh, they don't uh, go to school and i don't know how they think to solve the problem with this espo i don't have any idea or uh, the the um, men who uh, uh, go to visit the prostitutes if the police um, the illegal prostitutes if the police uh, ca catch them caught, caught them yeah their names are uh, published on the main uh, Side uh, side of, of the, the newspaper. newspapers, and if uh, the illegal prostitutes, you get a warning, and if they see a second time, they uh, put their picture on the milk box, yes. the milk box you c uh, uh, buy in the supermarket. So they are, they all have kids, yeah, and they say, hey, hey, so your mama yesterday, she's a prostitute, and they call it naming and shaming, naming and shaming, yeah, and it's and and it's it's really even even. And they, they publish this in the newspaper. And when we were there, they, we, we read the story about a woman who she, she wanted to commit suicide um, by, by um, jumping over the bridge in, into the water. And she got an aspo not to uh, c come too close to any water place. Yeah. So I mean, this <laughs> like they thought to manage social problems. Yeah. And also, uh, what I found so shocking was that if you break your ASPO log, yeah. I think two or three times, you automatically go to prison yeah. without having a trial before. Also so this means kids. it's criminalizing yeah. everything, pretty much. Yeah. So if you are, for example, listening too loud to a radio, you can end up in prison for yeah. <laughs> having heard too loud yeah. radio. And you had these advertisements on the bus stops uh, showing people with hooty because these are dangerous. Everyone who has this, this here, this here, you know, is dangerous. Eh? And with a number where, key, where you can call, yeah, if you see someone like this. <laughs> <laughs> and those was these two neighborhoods, yeah? yeah? There was the creative industry, posh single flats, uh, fancy restaurants, and really on the other side there was kids with <laughs> Thousands of espos, <laughs> but they really tried. It was kind of for the for the young people. It was kind of an honor to get an espo, you know, because they were chasing with the police. Um, and so, yeah, of course, we we uh, when we worked with the, with them, and this was kind of oh my god, what 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 are they doing? They bring these people into our new uh, urban village. And this was what they were not expecting. And so then uh, step by step, and really, they really started to whisper yeah. with us. And we already thought, oh my god, <laughs> do they yeah. listen so to strange. us? Yeah. They came to us, you should not work with the prostitutes. <laughs> and it was, so, it was so awful, because the people who were starting to whisper, and you know, the, the, the people sitting behind in their offices, that weren't even the people who are sitting in this new urban village, yeah, yeah? yeah. because we, we talked to the people also in the urban village, the yeah. designers we yeah, saw, yeah, you yeah. know, and they, they felt like, yeah, I mean, maybe it's it's good to make connections instead of just always being afraid or, or yeah, 
and it was only these people who only I mean who've never been in touch yeah, with 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 uh, Beeston Hill or the other communities. Yeah, they do not even bother to think about them. Yeah, but they don't want to even hear about it. Yeah, and it's so it's it's so. Um, so strange because the people in the other communities they are literally watching all the you know all the new buildings all the money that's coming into mm -hmm. the into the city and they do not even get a, a swimming pool yeah they are fighting for this yeah. since years and years and years and the, the, the others scene, are yeah, yeah. everything is built up built up for fancy people and they uh, no one is interested if their kids can go to swim in summer or not yeah that's really yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, we we really often talk about and wondering why we really didn't realize it immediately that there is something strange. Yeah, mm, I think maybe we realized, but we didn't want to maybe because we were already there and we already started it, and maybe we didn't want to realize it. Uh, yeah, so that this could happen. <laughs> yeah, this could happen as well. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To, to develop a project. So there yeah. is always uh, this sort of uh, preliminary research on uh, who has invited you and uh, trying to understand uh, why they, they invited you because yeah. there is this, uh, this need now for, yeah. uh, for an artistic intervention in order maybe to yeah. uh, articulate uh, plans unexpected. <laughs> 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 Completely <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, did you uh, in your practice also had some kind of difficulties to...? No, because uh, they were... Uh, normally I start by my own research, ah, yeah. with my own mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was wondering before the, the theme of expectation, mm -hmm. you know, of the two sides. What uh, ec um, com committant? Uh, expect by the artist and uh, what the artist expect by yeah you no know, yeah. Um yeah that's uh, that's really a, a very good uh, uh, question yeah well I mean we we mostly think what um, what do the committed commissioners really expect uh, from the artist but the other way around uh, is is uh, really never we think about yeah or we, we do not talk about what do artists expect from curators or from commissioners this is kind of yeah just invite us this is our <laughs> expectation yeah but uh, n there is no we, we don't do not think further yeah which is uh, which we should uh, too, because it's a mut mut do you say mutual? No, mutual uh, thing, yeah. So you feel like they are just inviting and then you don't feel there is an interest on uh, uh, what expectation they No, have no, no, no. M mostly it there is an uh, interest. I mean, there was an, an interest, but not in our <laughs> sense or okay. not the interest we wanted. Um, them is mostly, but uh, what do we expect uh, expect from them? We we never mention that. Yeah, we we oh yeah yeah we say provide us with an office. That's it. But uh, not uh, may maybe uh, provide us with information or why do you uh, want uh, to work with us? So this is kind of yeah, it's clear, but it it's not. Um, I mean, we should also think about. Uh, yeah, having more information from those who in are invite us or who, who are inviting artists. Why? How did you get to know about uh, and what's your expectations? Um, and so, I mean, this should also be discussed, yeah? It's, uh, do, did you ever uh, feel uncomfortable in a place? Because you move, I mean, yeah. you, you have to to live for a while yeah. in another country, in another yeah. city. Um, how, how is uh, the approach that uh, the mm, com mm, committant uh, as the patron? Okay. The patron um, normally have, or if you have, if you have uh, had a, a strange experience about that, and uh, Mm, if there were some um, some situation really uncomfortable for you, uh, mm. so besides the limit, what's the problem you, you find uh, in the place 
Yeah. So to, to feel not really welcomed, I would say this uh, was not Leeds. Uh, for me, it was Leipzig. Oh, yeah. um, this was a big, uh, big uh, overall German uh, project over, I think, think, two or three years or four years. It was called Shrinking Cities because this was really a phenomenon, or I think it's still, yeah, that over Europe, especially over the former Eastern um, uh, countries, like the former Eastern Germany, the big cities were really incredibly shrinking. Uh, so really like uh, a third of the people of Leipzig left, and this has a huge impact uh, to the cities or villages or whatever. And so they did uh, a two-year project, and uh, for one phase, uh, Wochenklaus was, so was invited, which was, uh, everything was okay. Um, and then when it came to where should we uh, be located, uh, they wanted us to be located at the modern gallery, uh, contemporary art gallery in Leipzig, which is uh, really famous there. Um, but I was <laughs> really um, suspicious because I knew the uh, director is so not convinced of socially engaged art. Uh, it was kind of, yeah, forcing her to take us and I wanted to go somewhere else, but we really, s we really felt that we were not welcome there. Like, um, I mean, I don't want to say ignoring because um, the, the the patrons or commissioners don't have to stay in touch with us every day or so. Really not, but it was kind of hiding us. Yeah, and and also uh, um, what's not the big deal, but this was really, I mean, we were, it was re winter, it was really icy, and uh, where we had to stay were two uh, studios on the ground floor, and it was so icy, yeah, and they didn't, I mean, it was really, everything was, was, was kind of on purpose to make it not nice for us, but this was only a personal thing. I have uh, one more example. <laughs> now it's a bashing, bashing. Bashing, bashing. No, I don't want to bash, but this was also maybe a bit difficult situation. It was in Vienna, the one at Brunnen Passage. Oh. <laughs> um, I think the, the difficult situation that Wochenklausur has been I invited by someone who was not working there in the end anymore. Yeah. So they changed the management team. And we already had this invitation. So we came there for four weeks and wanted to do our... Um, our work and it was a room they already presented themselves as a multicultural uh, space in, in a district in Vienna where yeah, a lot of people with migrant backgrounds are living and we were also uh, yeah, doing a project on this topic, uh, it is called intercultural intersection and we wanted to mention this point that yeah, people do not only identify themselves by their origin or by their nationality but also come together just because of a common interest, yeah, whatever that might be and we started three groups on, on one on politi politics, one on gardening and one on uh, architecture and um, the, the, the problematic thing was that this management team changed and that the, the new management team felt um, kind of a competition mm -hmm. between their program and us. And they also really made it very difficult for us mm -hmm. to work. So they were really, you know, talking to people and, and telling them they should not talk to us and they should, and they, they should be aware of us. And we, we wanted to build up our office in their space. This was already very difficult. So they, for ex it was a gallery space and they forbid us to put one single nail into the wall. So that was not uh, possible. So we, we found a way, you know, um, around that and we, we built a nice office mm -hmm. in the end. But even that they did not like at all. And yeah, yeah, that was also difficult. You know, this is something if, if you have the feeling that the people who are inviting you are kind of working against you for mm -hmm. no real, no, no real reason. I mean, in the end, the project worked out and we did not at all. I felt anyhow, you know, touch their identity or whatever but they always felt a little bit like mm -hmm. we are taking over their space, what are you doing there? And they were, you know, like having these arguments of you are artists, why are you not building up a, a tower or <laughs> uh, running around with masks on your face and doing mm -hmm. like a festival? Yeah, that's, that 
what they were telling us. We always had to report to them. They asked us to, can you please make every morning a 10 minute report about what you're doing, you know? And we said, well, maybe that's a bit difficult or maybe a bit too much. I mean, it's not a secret. You can come every day and ask us how it is going, but like this reporting system was a bit strange, yeah. But uh, I mean, in very, very often it also worked out quite yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, mostly. We have to say mostly. Some, most and it's of the it's times. not not only to blame uh, them. I mean, it's it's kind kind of different reasons. Uh, like uh, we think, yeah, we may be in Leipzig. We had uh, we should have insisted not to uh, be placed in in uh, even it's the famous place but uh, I, I always wanted to go to Eisenhüttenstadt yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> the, the, the do you know Eisenhüttenstadt no it means um, iron hut city and it was a uh, a, a city which was uh, built um, during the 50s completely new and you know this is this uh, really really uh, social uh, socialist cities like these uh, prefabricated buildings and no historical center and only for the worker and so and this is of course was kind of half shrinking yeah but there was no famous gallery what I'm we are not interested in yeah? and so they wanted to connect us to the to the Leipzig and even the problems there were harder than in Leipzig yeah so we could have insisted to think no we do not want to go to Leipzig we want to Give us a place in Eisenhüttenstadt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, after a certain moment, you say, yeah, yeah, okay, it doesn't depend on the place. Uh, there you can do their good projects. And it's really, um, I mean, if it's only about, uh, it's not only, uh, I, mean, I mean, if you have to freeze for <laughs> weeks in the winter, this is really, you feel like a little bit offended, yeah. But if they then start to work against you, yeah, this is then so so. Uh, where you think so, please do nothing. It's even better uh, than uh, working against. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is then really. But that could happen, and uh, it happens in other situations <laughs> also. Can yeah. I ask you something? Um, Again, uh, about this, uh, the fact that many of your other projects, are, most of your projects uh, are commissioned, uh, for me it's very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, because I think that most of, uh, of the artists like, uh, like Pamela are struggling in order to uh, like develop the research and then uh, raising eventually some, uh, some fundings. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, it's, uh, it's yeah. very risky also the other way around. And uh, you are uh, like... Uh, uh, telling us uh, all the, the different risks that you have uh, yeah. that you have faced um, in the last two weeks, uh, and Pamela knows it quite well because she has uh, followed most of the seminars. Uh, we have spoken about uh, uh, sustainability in socially engaged art practices uh, and also about social practices uh, as possible sustainable uh, models. And we have tried uh, to look at this topic from very different points of view. And we have also spoken about a lot, quite a lot, about two specific. Uh, um, aspects. So one is uh, the fundraising, mm -hmm. how to fundraise uh, money in, uh, in these sort of practices when uh, you don't have uh, like a, a proper material output but everything is based on, uh, on the process. And uh, we were speaking with uh, Rema Medina about the fact that uh, probably, but this is maybe our perception, uh, in your work the fundraising is quite an important part mm -hmm. and it's uh, uh, especially in the in the last project in Alaska it's uh, it's uh, it's a very interesting way to develop the pro the process uh, and also to involve this part which is usually a bit uh, hidden in uh, in the process uh, itself mm -hmm. so this is uh, one uh, not question i would like uh, to ask you to speak mm -hmm. about uh, the mm -hmm. this uh, this aspect and also we were speaking a lot about uh, uh, the formalization of partnership, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, and of commissioning, uh, the way uh, you formalize uh, the, the act of uh, being commissioned uh, a, a work. We have mm -hmm. spoken with, uh, um, we have like uh, discovered the, the experience of Consoni, and yesterday we were uh, uh, analyzing uh, the, the contracts, and we were speaking a lot about uh, how to, uh, how they uh, mm -hmm. like create uh, some. Uh, preliminary agreements with, uh, with the artists. So I would like to know uh, more abo about mm -hmm. uh, your experience in these two uh, realms. I 
concerning the fundraising, I think uh, there we have to divide with Wochenklausur. First of all, if there comes in an invitation from an institution or whomever, then they have to um, to finance actually the work of Wochenklausur, which means the residency, travel, accommodation, and the artist fee, as well as a small hands-on budget for like small things, which you we yeah like paper and whatever print something like that. But uh, all the things that we are uh, doing on site, actually, we have to make a plan or a concept that is good enough that either works without uh, a money flow, or we have to find ways how to finance it. And this, uh, within the history of Wochenklausur, there have been many different kind of strategies how to get money. I mean, in this first project, as Martina said, there was like this. Uh, um, this attempt to push the responsible persons at the city into into their responsibility by using also this strategy of, of asking a befriended journalist. Sometimes we are uh, like in, in the in the project in Glasgow, for example, where we tried to um, or where we founded a group of uh, or ask a, a, a group of women and. Um, to start their own business and, and uh, created a pool of supporters for them and we wanted of course also to provide some, with some money and with a facilitator who continues to work with this group of women um, until they feel confident to really start their business. Um, it was uh, really writing um, applications to where it was a research of uh, where are funds uh, that might match um, the goals of this project and we, we, we wrote them and then there was yeah, or for example, the one when Wochenklasse was invited to the Venice Biennial, there was this idea to use also the reputation of the uh, of this art institution and especially also the, this this massive amount of visitors coming to the uh, Biennial and there it's approximately I don't know two hundred thousand visitors. Um, so so the, the we developed the strategy of um, making a, a lottery. No, not the lottery. Rapping. Sorry, kind a of raffle, a ref yeah. raffle. A, a, a raffle, where we um, ask for you know small prizes and put them in bags, and you could uh, buy one for twenty euros, and then you have at least the value of this twenty euros as a present in this bag. And with this, it was able to to finance, um, I think, one year of of um, language schools for teenage refugees in in Macedonia. There are various strategies. I'd say it's not getting easier over the years. And the other it's way around. <laughs> it's no getting really harder and harder. I mean, we're doing this when we're doing a Wochenklausur project over the certain amount of weeks we have. You know, then we, and there, there is no... I mean, if there is someone really good and says, I want to do only fundraising, then, I mean, this person is more than welcome to do it alone. Yeah. But usually it's like, uh, it's always discussing, you know, we're sitting together on a table, someone finds a fund and says, look what I found, I mean, do you think that would fit? And then we discuss how we should write this application, yeah. Or, or I don't know, if, we, if you're doing a raffle, then we try to, you know, everyone is calling to companies or to news. Papers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, so I think there is not a, a, a dedicated person to do only this, and as the teams are always alternating, artists are not always the same team doing the projects. It's it's a collective effort once again. I mean, of course, there are some uh, who are not so. I mean, there is one precondition to uh, for those who work with Wochenklausur that means not to be shy, because uh, once it's more about meeting people, always calling people and begging for something. If you if you are really shy, that uh, wouldn't work. Yeah, so you don't care. I ask for help and for money and for whatever, or also pretending. To do something uh, to get uh, this, uh, this is uh, this is really. But nevertheless, there are some better in in asking for for money and others bet better in in convincing uh, people to do something or so. And and yeah, so. But it's uh, as Claudia said, it's a group's effort uh, mostly. collaboration. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, in the end, it's about reaching our goal. You know, like making this difference what we what we concepted in the beginning. Yeah. We have to find a way to go there, yeah. and if we see after a certain amount of time, okay, this strategy is not working. We're really desperately sitting together and trying to find yeah. a way how we can work yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. There are some frustrations too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> calling, calling, calling. Yeah. No, 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 no. And Yeah, yeah. Part in the process, yeah. So it's not like uh, this uh, um, abstract entity giving money to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's not. No, 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 no. No, no way. Yeah. And when it comes to the contracts, because you are asking, I mean, the usual way is when uh, someone um, approaches us, do you want to um, do a project, then uh, we start to research and make uh, proposals, about three proposals. Uh, often we, we are invited to a research trip, if it's not too expensive or too far away for the inviting uh, things just to get an uh, overview or an insight about the situation and we most most helpful thing i find is to read the if if we can read the language uh, the newspapers and uh, the the more local uh, the better because we really name then uh, you can read uh, again there uh, is this problem or there is this or so and then we make th three proposals and the inviting institution can choose for one if it's nothing then we they don't like any of the three then we uh, make other proposals um and then this is a proposal is part of the contract also um the durations the w what we request on office thing and accommodation and what's uh, what is paid and uh Especially when it's about England, then uh, there is kind of 700 pages of legal things. <laughs> we you should know. Have to dis <laughs> you know, <laughs> assign something. Not even the commissioners can explain yeah. to us what it really means, but it needs to be. We should. We don't. We don't uh, should sue them when we uh, step over and <laughs> break our nose. Uh, uh, It's it's uh, yeah yeah I mean it's not one of the group but uh, w it's most uh, mostly two or three of our core group mo mostly two of the core group who are going into a project and then we hold we, we bring other artists and one of these uh, two is then signing but uh, in, in the most cases it's Claudia um, because she's the one who's nearly joining each project. Um, and if not, it's some someone else. I mean, it's not the new new ones, but one of the older members and who is in in the project. Yeah, and and yeah, I mean, it's also about sending the contract. <laughs> then can we remove this and maybe this? It's it's really uh, negotiated. Yeah, and mostly it's very simple. And in 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 the UK, the it's always like the this. Project it saved us actually because they wanted to yeah, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. super extra sophisticated yeah. contract. You know, ours is pretty simple in yeah. the end, yeah. But it was because of this contract they wanted us to sign that they had no choice, you know, not to, to, to pay what they said. Yeah. They pay us, so in the end, it was good for us. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> good for like us, yeah. One uh, thing that it's uh, more about uh, the your uh, inner dynamics. I would like to know uh, in which way you communicate and you decide things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we communicate mainly via. 
telephone or email. I mean, I would say email is the first yeah. the most important thing because we, we have a common uh, email account and actually if everyone in the group has the access data and sees the email that is coming in and I'm the one who is really trying to keep track of every email and if there is something which is still not replied to, I'm, you know, maybe make some calls and say, have you read this email? What should we do about it? And then... I mean, as it's, it's I'm there... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really, uh, she's ma more or less the coordinator. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, yeah I, I think it's necessary because, uh, yeah, it's still, there are a lot of emails also always, always coming in also about, you know, questions about the group and, and publications and whatever, all these kinds of things. And if there is, I mean, many of these things are not such big uh, new things which we have to you know uh, call for a meeting to come in to decide uh, how should we reply to this question because the quest question came in a lot of times and we discussed it through so i'm just replying but i mean if it comes for a project then there's always you know we call in a meeting and then we meet uh, face to face and discuss it yeah and and then everyone is maybe you know if if, if we call or s someone has seen the email they are already doing research at home and you know they come more or less prepared to the to the meetings and then we discuss it through and and how we come to decisions it's i mean the majority decides <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i mean everyone has, has uh of course if you say i i I do not want to uh, uh, be part of this project because it's uh, an area I don't want to go there. Like <laughs> me, not definitely do not want to go to Alaska. Um, this is uh, totally okay. Yeah? Or if uh, uh, the majority decides for a project, you do not really be so fond of. You can say, okay, uh, without me, <laughs> it's not what I would do. Or so, but um, then. Uh, Person, but uh, uh, so you don't feel like uh, jealous or possessive to the collective in the sense that uh, if you don't want, you feel okay and trustful. Yeah, the other yeah, people yeah, yeah, totally. And that's a, a yeah. good act in the yeah, collective. Yeah, totally. It's, yeah, yeah. It's not uh, so easy when uh, when you, uh, you you started the project and you went on for a lot of time and pro and yeah. Uh, at work, so yeah. But I mean, I, I would say so. I mean, yeah, I'm 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 uh, with the group since the beginning, and uh, since I don't become younger, <laughs> <laughs> but but older. It's uh, since years. Uh, like Wolfgang and me, always say we just want to slowly, slowly fade out <laughs> of of the group. Um, of course, if uh, and Claudia is also a long-term uh, member. Of course, there is like uh, with the last project too new. You you you, you s see that you're s kind of uh, suspicious. Will they really do that? And I mean, we we never send completely new without an old member. Yeah. So there was Wolfgang in Köln with, uh, and and in Alaska it was only you as a, the, an old member with uh, three uh, new ones. This is a must. If there is new, uh, it, it wouldn't work if there is not at least one of the old group. Uh, but slowly, slowly, uh, we hope to get uh, a new, new members as, as a s more or less steady group. I mean, it's like we are a core group. We say always we are f five to seven, but those who are really in the project, to be honest, it's three. <laughs> It's uh, Wolfgang and me, uh, and then sometimes it's Karl, yeah. because we have our jobs. Uh, we can't; no one can live uh, out of uh, from Wochenklausur, so we have our jobs, and it's not easy to say to your colleagues when you are employed and say, "Hey, I, I go for another five weeks goodbye." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can um, and. Th also, at last, uh, when I speak for myself, I think it's uh, it, it's it's if you're so long, you ca you get this routine, and this is not always the best. If you have uh, always ah, and it's again this, and I exactly know this will lead us in this or in this. So you need really fresh. <laughs> uh, uh, 
uh, energy and, and and so yeah and 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 really I I really do not want to. Uh, I mean, I, w I like to be a member of Wochenklasur and work uh, whatever it's needed, and, and but I do not want to be my lifelong in the project. And it's also really, I, I mean, I'm, I'm 55, I do not want to uh, shit on a bucket. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, if it has to be, I could manage it. But if I can say thank you, uh, it's not my place. Where I, I, I'm too old, yeah, and and I have uh, uh, pain in my back if I have to sleep on the ground floor. Yeah, I mean, I'm, this is for young people. <laughs> Better <laughs> please do that. I did it already. I I experience it's fine, but not anymore. I mean, the real reason why I didn't go to <laughs> Alaska because I'm very anxious and there are bears and wolves and, and the ice and the sea and this is... <laughs> so uh, I'm more the... I always say I join the projects where at, at the corner there is a drugstore. <laughs> this, this is uh, my precondition. <laughs> or at least something uh, where you can drive to and there is not the see in between <laughs> you <laughs> and the swamp or so mm. i'm uh, yeah it's it's really it sounds stupid but it's uh, depending also to the to your age yeah things like this yeah if there's no drugstore <laughs> <laughs> yeah terrible but there i i i didn't experience uh, this slightest kind of gelosity or so. I mean, we had problems with uh, with uh, some um, artists who worked uh, with us. Uh, one of them who we saw uh, is when when uh, you realize. I mean, it's d it's different to talk with people and say it's all about a team and it's not about individual uh, thing, and then really go into the project. And it's very very. Um, Seldom, uh, but still, it's uh, the case that it's not possible for some persons to work in a team. So, for example, this one, he was kind of from the first day walking around and giving his personal uh, business cards and uh, started a, a kind of a by project, uh, with which, which was not the Wochenklasur project, but started kind of his own project. So, yeah that could happen. I mean, this is still okay, yeah, but it doesn't fit uh, into the group then. Yeah. But this is really very, very seldom. I I yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I have another, another question, curiosity. Um, in my perception, um, as, uh, as artists, uh, we uh, influence the surrounding, the, 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 the really close mm. surrounding. Uh, sometimes uh, we can notice, it can be visible to have, uh, uh, you know, this, um, this um, side effect. Uh, um, like uh, we can influence people, how the people work, the method, uh, uh, the... Um, the messages or the even uh, the, the relation that are around us, especially if we live in a place for, for a while or if we are stable in a place. Have you uh, seen, have you noticed in uh, uh, Vienna something like uh, this, um, uh, this effect, this avalanche effect of your way of working in the art scene or in the social scene or between your friends, maybe, or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. someone who, who know you. Mm -hmm. Now, I would, I would say, I would like uh, if this what was uh, <laughs> slightly, slightly starting since twenty years could be an effect of Wochenklasse, but we can't be 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 for sure. But because there is no one who said yes, I I I built another similar group because of Wochenklasse. Um, I would, I would more or less say uh, it's, it's not only it was not only Wochenklausur, but but the time uh, when uh, when uh, Wochenklausur started was kind of uh, ready to 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 uh, make a make a slight change in the art scene. So that was you know the 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 beginning of the 90s was in the uh, art scene kind of 
we had the 80s behind us where it was more about um, I do not want to offend but it was more or less like this uh, superficial not super was this uh, oh yes oberflächlich is superficial but not in the bad way it was about uh, chic uh, neo geo neo of neo paintings and it was kind of this chic uh, 80s and so the people were kind of um, yeah fed up with and so the time I would say made a change and uh, maybe that Mohan Klasur was back in those days kind of a radical example just to really uh, break with this um, yeah I mean yeah the, the reaction uh, maybe of the of the theory in in Vienna or in the local uh, scene yeah there was maybe an influence yeah yeah a slight a slight influence and uh, what what's really astonishing is that it's not what was more or less our wish also to be discussed and work as a model in the social uh, field is that there happened not really something i mean it's uh, they it's also okay because they do not care if we say we they directly do not care if we come and say we are an artist group and we want yeah. uh, use us you know, it's it's for of no importance for them if we are artists or not if uh, the for them is uh, every help is uh, welcomed and call it art or not we don't care if it's art if not it's only discussed in the in the art scene I mean, I also feel like in in an in an uh, academic discourse, yeah, I still yeah. see only little influence in in, in yeah. Austria or we little to nothing, in Vienna, yeah. little to yeah. nothing. More like, please step out of our garden. <laughs> um, I I see more yeah. influence in the English-speaking countries where yeah. I have the feeling it's really growing. There are you know. Um, bringing in new programs at the university that are really targeted at, 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 at socially engaged art or uh, relational practice and this I feel it's it's really a pity because I mean not that I that I feel everyone has to work as we are doing not at all I mean it's it's good that there is a variety within a system always but uh, I already have the feeling it's a bit ignorant in, in yeah, Austria yeah. and, and I in the academic in field, the yeah. academic yeah, yeah, field yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that yeah. I feel. I think uh, also in Germany it's much uh, yeah. better. But yeah. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's really interesting. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, it often uh, often uh, happens that uh, we work locally, but then uh, it's like uh, I don't know why, but it's like a, this ignorance towards yeah. some someone yeah. that is close to you. Yeah. You yeah. look farther, yeah. but you don't look. Yeah. Yeah. Next yeah. year. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Strange. On the one hand, on the other hand, I think it's yeah. Maybe this is the kind of jealousy then, because it's too there. The competition is too yes. close. Uh, because you know the person. You know the it's person. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something personal. Yeah. It's not something yeah. uh, professional. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then Something yeah, else gets you involved. Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's really funny, yeah. You're completely right. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just wondering um, uh, if you could give us some uh, background about uh, the moment in which, uh, like culturally, historically, socially, the moment in which uh, you Vokin Klausur decided to, to start as Vokin Klausur because I think that uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting to see how um, in, um, in specific moments uh, uh, of our society um, collaborative practices uh, become more uh, urgent. Uh, so I can imagine that uh, at the beginning of the 90s where, when uh, uh, globalization started to be something uh, that was really happening mm -hmm. and that was uh, actually affecting uh, our, uh, our lives and uh, the mutual uh, relationships uh, between, uh, between people uh, and uh, countries uh, and practitioners. Uh, I mean, I can imagine that uh, uh, probably uh, there was somehow a need 
-hmm. to to work collab coll collaboratively also as mm -hmm. you said as a reaction towards uh, the 80s uh, and uh, all this uh, sort of uh, very individualistic uh, practices mm -hmm. and now i'm wondering if uh, this is again a moment in which collaboration is uh, required uh, Viviana and I, for example, we, uh, within the project Radio Materiality, we have started uh, research about uh, collaborative uh, practices and, uh, in general, respo cultural responses uh, towards the, the, the crisis uh, and uh, all the, the mm -hmm. effects of, of the yeah. crisis. Yeah. Um, we have investigated uh, the, the scene in Madrid and in Barcelona. Uh, we have been in, uh, in Greece. Uh, and we are uh, <coughs> now making our mind about... Uh, uh, the, the, the need for collaborative practices and uh, the, 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 the importance of collaboration uh, in moments of crisis or uh, mm -hmm. very strong uh, change. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering uh, if you feel somehow this sort of background uh, yeah. in, the yeah. like in the way working close was started. Because yeah. in, the yeah. in the same period, for example, other important collectives like uh, Superflex uh, started, yeah. so there was yeah, yeah. something yeah, yeah. Uh, happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to decipher yeah. now if this is yeah. uh, a moment in which this urgency is uh, like becoming stronger and stronger. Yeah. I hope so, actually. Yeah. So I would uh, I would say it's definitely uh, it was definitely the, the historical. Uh, uh, surrounding, if you uh, want to call it, in, in Austria, which was that we we started in Austria slightly to to feel uh, the of the 80s of the new neoliberalism, which was Austria is always a little bit late <laughs> than all the others, um, but you know that started in the end of the 70s, uh, beginning of 80s with uh, with Thatcher and uh, Reagan with really strong neoliberalism with, with really cutting down the social welfare which lasted really for long and still exist is still quite uh, a bit existing in Austria but it started to re that you 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 realized it yeah that the social welfare was cut down that the unemployment benefit I mean it was kind of it Austria was always called like the island of the not saint, but uh, the blessed, because it was kind of uh, ah, we have uh, no problems and uh, everything is uh, provided for you, and it was really and all they also s uh, uh, s uh, always called um, Austria so the one and the only social uh, socialist state uh, which is not a part of the uh, uh, communism, because it was really a, a huge uh, social net. With uh, unemployment benefit, you 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 just got it for years, and you not don't had even uh, you only uh, um, said you can't stop because I have a new job. You then didn't have to go there. It was kind of really easy living, yeah. But. It started in the end of the 80s and uh, of the 90s that this was cut down, kind of really, um, how do you say, um, uh, strict, yeah. And it really, you, you, it really the homeless were, were obvious. Uh, before you had, you, you knew each single homeless in Vienna. Yeah, there were three, and they were famous, <laughs> kind of this. Yeah, and then it was kind of wow, 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 and you saw them, and 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 um, the companies. Uh, was this retired uh, the people and so and this was really and another thing uh, was e extremely according to this um, arising the right wing uh, it was in in uh, the late eighties that the right wing party was uh, and Austria right wing is really right wing <laughs> uh, was getting uh, bigger and bigger it's not the uh, yeah. in some areas the, the, the strongest party um, and so this was all uh, uh, kind of really you felt it and you read it and you saw it each day and you were, it was kind of a new confrontation yeah? the 70 generation like man we was that oh everything will be happy and it will everything will the future will be better and better and now you saw <laughs> that doesn't seem like <laughs> 
And so this was really uh, the ground for, for uh, not that we said because of that we will now uh, found Wochenklausur, but it was kind of uh, the influence, the atmosphere, yeah, that it that you started to think about. Mm, so I don't know, should we really s go on with? Uh, so I was an artist and designer, yeah, to produce another nice uh, chair or another nice picture or sculpture. Strange, yeah. Um, maybe we also have our responsibility and so yeah and it was this atmosphere yeah so it really and 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 it was um yeah i think it was was uh, also a lot of other artists which i can't really name but i have, have I can just recall that they changed in the way the work uh, and they left uh, so the more traditional uh, way to work yeah and yeah in another way like Wochenklausur but still uh, we're not really satisfied by the way they worked anymore yeah what will you say this was yeah and I mean, it was uh, of, of course the globalization, but I think the, uh, this was a topic, but the real uh, global Austria was part of the European Union since 1995. And then it started to get a real big topic, like first, of course, uh, from the right wing uh, parties, like who, and we have to, should not mix with other nations, <laughs> yeah? Austrians should be Austrians. And we don't, you, you remember, we should not have the chocolate yeah, out of I blood mean, from yeah. the touch, really obscure things, but also um, the, the, the real and, and, and uh, the real criticism on the, on the globalization, on the really globalization, which come then more from the left uh, than from the right, uh, this all was arising. Yeah. And then with a lot of people thought maybe it's not the time to Make a nice portrait. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was also the time of the institutional critique and the in the art theory. Also, this uh, made an influence, and so we thought, okay, institutional use the institution. But as uh, uh, Nick uh, for the Eindhoven said, repurpose the the institutions, and so yeah. Re reconnecting what you were saying before about that uh, your products was like a result about you were getting tired to produce a nice object in a way. Now let's say I was I'm cons constantly considering about this aspect because uh, uh, kind of uh, producing objects that they are of course you don't produce objects because they are just nice, but it's part mm -hmm. of a practice where you work on this uh, production and uh, uh, reflecting on another aspect. At the same time, uh, this constantly may maybe if you would be a successful artist uh, selling all of your objects, maybe you would be happy about it. I don't <laughs> know, and uh, you don't have the problem of collecting this object and uh, moving around and uh, become, I don't know, I co call like kind of a weight of object, uh, become uh, also a kind of a tired just thing to produce object, but I'm more interested in uh, get engaged with what does it mean producing object, what does it mean this shift of uh, production and all of this kind of... Uh, um, issue that since a while that artists they are working on it and, uh, and at the same time I think how much a, an artist product can affect a social engagement uh, which of course you have to always consider say when you do something for the society it's something al always you don't have to be selfish but say if each one gives something to the society it become a kind of a collective uh, uh, effort in a way but at the same time I think how much the social products uh, can affect the society and can contribute. At the same time, also become a kind of a, a frame and platform to be in a museum, on the other hand. Mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, of course, you work in a kind of, a, uh, let's say, with immigrant or in other every, every context, and then I'm considering, say, you did really something to that asp in that moment, uh, or it's just like producing object. Uh, at the same time, this become a kind of a same products using it. I don't want mm -hmm. to say tools, but you know what mm -hmm. I mean. Then, because at the end, the format 
is the result that go in an exhibition or in uh, also if it's a more a kind of abstract way and it's not like just like formal one but at the end become the result of a, a process that have you been done and have you been engaged with so I don't know it's a just point that constantly come to my mind and uh, mm -hmm. Ah, but there was no question involved, right? I mean, uh, um, it's 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 always a question of uh, definition. Yeah, of course. Uh, if we if we can't uh, we can't uh, call the result of our work an object, but uh, of course we can see that we make um, maybe the target group to our object and this uh, sounds really not positive um, and I, I can understand if uh, uh, um, if this critique will come so uh, you you still stick to the institution you um, make kind uh, you, you make your target group, the participants or the people you work for or with, like immigrants or, or homeless people, you make them object of the, of the institution. I can, uh, I can totally uh, understand this critique and we have really to think about, and this could really happen, uh, but the reason why we do this is 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 the one thing which is the basis. Uh, the, the reason why we stick to the institution is uh, to use the capital of the institutions, which uh, the cultural institutions have a big, you know, not not the capital in um, sense of the money, but in sense of their 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 uh, support and their 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 image. It's it's uh, like the cultural capital they have. Yeah, if you just name, I don't know the Venice Biennale. Yeah, so then uh, the people familiar with the with culture and art. Oh wow, Venice Biennale use this this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's not not um, because of us just to be part there and to to make uh, the project uh, object uh, of this but to use the institution and 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 this more more or less the other way around yeah yes. yeah and also i mean this is uh, getting harder but uh, uh 20 years ago there a lot of the the art institutions had really a lot of money especially in austria the the, the cultural and art uh, departments they had really a lot of money and uh the social uh, get less and less the sh social um, departments, so they really get cut down, cut down, and we said, okay, then <laughs> let's shift a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still in the art, because this is still art accepted, what we do, we are an artist group, all the, uh, it's, it's not only that we use the art institution, meanwhile, it's also, also the other way around, yeah, because uh, they, they also have to, to um, offer a broad, uh, what do you say, spectrum, yeah. a broad, broad uh, variety, variety of, of uh, so they have to uh, show our painters, they have to show, show performance, and nowadays they have to uh, invite socially engaged art groups or artists, so it's also that they use the variety of different art categories and so uh, it's it's kind of mutual <laughs> thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was the other question? I don't I don't know. Know. That was it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah what, I, what I wanted to say because it's often and and um, I think it's still on, on on our website what we since years said we want to change it. Uh, w in the beginning, uh, when we started, uh, it was kind of a purpose to sound a little bit offending to the traditional uh, art categories, and we uh, of course uh, kind of wrote maybe you should rethink and change your uh, canvas and your what is pencil. Brush uh, against um, yeah, socially uh, engaged art practices or so, and that of course that sounded offending, but it was kind of more or less 
defense, yeah, and also to 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 yeah to bring it more into the di discussion, yeah. And we all uh, we say no, we we do not want to change, yeah. We just want to to add. Uh, we d we d never would uh, say stop paint. Yeah, this is stupid. Uh, we just wanted to say open the the art uh, again for a for a new category. It's time. Yeah, the last time it was uh, the 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 computer, and uh, the, the before it was the video and the photography and the the performance and all entered the art. Um, scene or the art field and now it's time to open again and uh, it's not it's not completed yeah there can so many different things uh, be art yeah so m uh, maybe some some text we should change on the on our website is still kind of yeah stressing the point Stre too much yeah <laughs> 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 Yeah. 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 Speak publicly because uh, if it's about politicians, for example, or decision or opinion leaders, they act in the public always like uh, they are expected. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you invite someone from a left party or someone from a right party yeah. and to talk in the public, it's clear that it's kind of a, a um, campaign and they will always repeat, repeat that what the party. Uh, want them uh, so it's better to uh, keep uh, keep them what they say from the public but the public should see that there is something going on and then we Ah, yeah, the, the Swiss uh, project so, uh, so you know it so then we, we, we this is one of uh, thing we sort of sent uh, the decision makers it was I don't know how many uh, boat trips it were a lot of yeah, 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 yeah. It was really a lot of uh, always with a couple of decision makers, and and it was. Um, I mean, on the one hand, they can't leave <laughs> because you can only jump into the water if you say I don't want to talk anymore. Uh, and on the other hand, it was it was really known uh, or, or, or spread to the public, and they aha, Wochen so again. They always leave with a boat with only a couple of of people but um, they uh, we told them they don't have to report about the result or uh, what they are talking about they can especially the the people from the media were invited on the boat and it was really uh, it was really uh, a good thing because they, they r spoke in a completely different way they, they you, you you really realized that they they most of them are not really so bad about the drug addicted and uh, since there sometimes also there was a uh, drug addicted on the boat and it is really kind of a poo they have a hard uh, uh, life and yeah because they don't have the parties uh, behind them and saying hey you have to 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 push our uh, strategy and our you know our, our line forward and so so that really uh, sometimes helps yeah even if you say okay it's about hiding and keeping the public out, but uh, sometimes it's it's really help. It really helps, and we did it in another way uh, with other projects. For example, this was yeah. Sorry. Sorry. What was it about? You mean the project? Ah, uh, in okay. In, in Zurich, actually, there was um, this open drug scene happening on a specific square, and so this was kind of a point of interest for Wochenklausur. It was heavily discussed also in the media, and uh, what was found, what the group could find out through research, that at the really bottom line of all the people who were drug users were um, women who um, financed their um, their habit or their addiction, habit, yeah, their addiction, addiction through prostitution, through sex working. 
so they could not even find a sleeping uh, space because usually in the night they had to work. And they were mostly homeless again. Yeah, they were homeless. Yeah. They had no, no, you know, um, apartment or whatever. So they were either dependent on their, yeah, uh, on their clients or on the people who were, you know, forcing them into pr prostitution, maybe. Uh, and the uh, uh, idea was to uh, build or to open a space, a safe space, a kind of a pension where uh, these women could find uh, a resting place and which was also open during the day. And it was very important to create an, an atmosphere in, in, in the city to, to get the decision makers on the side of this project because uh, it was important and necessary that the city of, of Zurich financially supports this project and that's why uh, these uh, boat talks were uh, created to um, yeah to have uh, decision makers um, discussing the issue getting interest in interested in this topic creating an understanding of the situation of these women and then finally could uh, or were interested in supporting this project yeah so that was a small <laughs> overview of this project. And this was the project in Salzburg, which was in 1996, when uh, the group uh, decided to do something for um, uh, asylum seekers in custody for deportation, because the situation in deportation detention in Austria is really... Uh, especially at that time and now again, unfortunately, it's really, it's, it's uh, incredible, uh, awful. They uh, were forced to stay in the cells uh, during the entire day. They had no possibility to talk to a lawyer. They had no possibility to get uh, even the simplest hygienic articles. Um, so it was really, uh, they were treated incredibly uh, bad. And the idea was to um, to put in a social and legal service uh, for um, for these people in uh, deportation detention. And once again, there was created this uh, like very typical Austrian hut in the middle of Salzburg. <laughs> so very much in a very picturesque area where it was really, um, you could see it from the first moment when you were you know, walking through and you were thinking, what is this? And uh, um, the idea was to invite again the people who are um, either from NGOs or, or for, from the police, people who are working in the, in the detention, um, decision makers again who had uh, could have a dialogue there, which was visible, uh, uh, which people could see from outside but could not join the, the discussion themselves. And there was also what was interesting is that there was one member of the city government, was it, who then uh, sued? It was uh, it I was a member of the parliament. Of the parliament, but he was uh, from Salzburg. Mm -hmm. And he was really against this hut. He didn't want it to have it in his beautiful uh, historic city center. And so he even um, put in a, a, league, a lawsuit um, to, to get rid of this hut. And this was, of course, heavily discussed in the media. So, so this was good for the project in the end because a lot of attention was finally, you know, around this hut and uh, around this project. And the good thing what came out is that uh, in the end there was a, a social and legal service put into place which was uh, been taken over by the Diakonie, which is, uh, again, not the Caritas, but the, the Protestant Church-related relief organization in Austria. And they done it um, until the um, Ministry for Interior Affairs uh, stopped it um, and and give it to another um, organization which was very close connected to them um, but they still could you know uh, keep an uh, f uh, feed in the door as we say uh, by uh, agreeing to some special you know um, a demand from the Ministry of Interior who said you you are only allowed to make to give them um, a service for returning to your home country. You know, they could have uh, some 
Uh, Re repatriation uh, repatri program is it called in the yeah. European Union? Yeah, repatriating so program. So that those who were sent uh, back home, yeah. and then you really very generously help uh, them uh, to get home how again. How it's best for you to get home yeah. again? So this is yeah. <laughs> and so the diakonie who did before the social and legal service um, officially said yes, we do that. But in real, they still continued with their, you know, legal service, and yeah, and now they can do it officially again, but with uh, massive problems from the police itself and still also from the government. So, but this was the idea of this hut, you know, creating like an like a like an eye catcher, if you like, but uh, still having the possibility of have discussions in there, which cannot be joined by an audience who would only, you know, give the, 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 the people who are discussing in this hut a platform for, again, as Martina said, this, like, publicity and uh, I'm representing now my party and I'm here the hardliner, yeah, because it's something different if you're really looking, maybe in the case of Zurich, for example, eye to eye to, uh, to uh, sex working women, so, and uh, there was... Take part, yeah, 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 in small uh, groups, yeah. This is another example of, of uh, a square in Germany, uh, a project which we did only one year ago, I think in 2012. There was also, um, it's, a, it's a space that is earned by the church actually, but it can be used by everyone and people are passing by to go to the cent city center and there was also a... Um, a pub, uh, an, an open drug scene manifesting there and they, yeah, so uh, we've been invited to do a project because it was of course again discussed in the media D the people in Kassel didn't like to go there, they felt uh, not safe using the space, they felt offended by their drug users um, and in the end the idea was to create there uh, like a mediator like two social workers who should uh, kept keep um, um, contact to all the parties who are using this square and to create an understanding and uh, yeah, a way that all the people who are using the square can live together. So it should not be about you know moving the, the, the drug users again to a different square in the city because this already happened several times because uh, the, the strategy of the city was until a Wochenglasur came to Kassel was always to push them from one side to the other. So they have been moving around in the city and they ended up there. And so uh, we came and said, okay, they need to have a place. They're also, you know, um, people of the city, they're residents <laughs> as everyone else. Um, they need a place. And the idea was to, to have two social workers which should be paid uh, uh, by the church and the city. So we felt they are both responsible. That they both uh, should be should pay for these uh, social workers and there was also massive problems going on between the city and the church for several reasons and uh, it was it was possible by creating this hut to start or re restart the dialogue between all the parties who are using the square mm -hmm. as well as between the decision makers of the city and the church and in the end it took uh, a long time for them to finally decide, but uh, there are no now two social workers in the place, and yeah, so they have been working now for half a year already, and it looks like they will be financed also for the future. And once again, here the idea. I mean, these these talks were moderated by one from from Wochenklausur. Um, we always invited the media to to come before they enter the hut to to yeah report about it and then this was yeah both media and the, the network we were discussing with the again with mm -hmm. Herman and him about the uh, projects and uh, yeah we both agreed um it and uh, uh Herman asked me I mean she just uh, just it made it to <laughs> highlight <laughs> <laughs> Media and, uh, and uh, uh, I 
mean, uh, if uh, I, I, I wonder if the, 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 the connection with the media, the use of the media, has been uh, uh, then uh, replaced by uh, the, this idea of the, of the network, or if the two things uh, have been. Uh, you mean uh, of the or internet, or uh, no? The, the journalists and uh, like the mass media, the yeah, presence yeah. of the mass media in the, in the, in the project. Uh, how do you use it? How do you use also the idea yeah. of the network? What do you mean uh, by network? Uh, like uh, creating uh, networks of people involved uh, in... Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. Visibility and also consistency to the yeah. itself. Yeah, so I would uh, say that it depends on, on the project's purpose and the, on the situation, uh, whether we think it's, as we already mentioned, it's, it's good to, to invite the media from the first moment to, to um, ask them to report uh, accurate what we are doing, what we want, or just to, to um, there are several projects we, we do not work uh, with the media because sometimes it's really not necessary <laughs> and sometimes it's counterproductive uh, if, if the public would be aware that uh, prostitutes come into the neighborhood or so prostitutes. Um, <coughs> so it's really, it's completely depending and on, the, on, the, on the project, on the, the met method we work uh, with and we always discuss it. Should we, should we not? What do you think? I, is the best sometimes uh, was when we work within a gallery, they come because they read about the exhibition and they uh, then come and talk to us and uh, yeah that's uh, that's totally okay and we then must be aware should we just talk about the art thing and less about the project or should we say oh yeah that's fine we can post this or this message maybe this will will help or so yeah it's really uh, depending yeah, on on what's the best uh, for the project and it's not so that we we uh, they are the marionettes yeah really not sometimes we try to get them but they are not interested yeah or sometimes as we said we we just want to keep them but they are interested it's not that we have to snip with a finger and say ah wonka so i coming yeah really not so this is really a work <laughs> yeah i mean they 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 need uh, good stories um otherwise it, they say Pff. yeah but I mean, in the case of Kassel, for example, I mean, it was hard to get really interested journalists because most of them, they just wanted to have their, you know, supported their yellow press arguments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, it, it, the, the idea was also to put an extra pressure on the church as well as on the mm -hmm. city who have been playing since years that they are not acting. And uh, we can I mean, we invited them, and they were then again saying, "So now even some some artists have to come to deal about that issue. So what will come out of did that? Yeah. And in the end, this gave them a little extra pressure, yeah, because they wanted to get rid of this media. They, they you know, they kind of tried things um, which didn't work. I mean, their only strategy was in the end pushing them from one area to the next. And uh, so in, in, in this case, it really helped to, to, to give them this extra push of now you finally have to finance this. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good concept, actually. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a strategy that is not just, you know, moving the problem from one side to the other. And so it, it worked out. Yeah, but and it's uh, <coughs> mostly about the very local media because this is the one which is really of help because uh, it's about the local communities and uh, for example the project, this, the third project we did in Italy in, in Civitella Tagliano, um, <coughs> the media played a really a big role because we uh, from the first moment uh, worked together with a very very local uh, media, it was about it is also a kind of a shrinking city, you know, the young people, uh, it's a beautiful, extremely beautiful old city, somewhat close to Arvieto, um, really old uh, city, and not only the buildings are old, it's that the elderly people, 
stay and the younger leave because there were no jobs anymore. And they uh, were missing, the elderly people were missing kind of a community center for themselves, like where they can meet and uh, have coffee and talk to, uh, you know, they have always them like senior, not a senior center, but kind of this and the, how is it called this? Bocha, Bocha, Bocha. And they were always promised by the mayor, yeah, yeah, we you will get your uh, center, you will get it. You were over years, and they they didn't uh, get it. And uh, we involved the media from the very beginning, and we said, okay, they will report that, and kind of report, yeah, they will get it soon. Uh, and so this makes uh, uh, pressure, and so they were that was really really helpful, yeah? because you know this is what the local people read, and then uh, it's not uh, good for the for the politicians. Politicians, uh, they they have a bad press in the local because if you put it in, don't know, Carriere della Sera, no one is interested. What <laughs> what's uh, <laughs> in people in Pari or Milan? Uh, oh, why should I be interested in Civitella Italiana? Where is it? <laughs> kind of this, yeah. So it's really uh, um, about the very local. Mostly, I, I can't remember. I mean, we had uh, in in Zurich uh, the, the chief editors of the really big uh, the Swiss uh, um, newspapers, but it because it was Zurich, it was, the, it was it was the capital, and it was the election time. It was pre the campaign, and so that is uh, then it's a more a national topic. Yeah, but if it's about the on-site things, it's really. If small uh, local papers are they really important to get them. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> yeah how it works best, yeah. yeah. And therefore it's really also needed to have always. And we have always, what we have forgot to mention, we when we are not working in Austria or, or Germany, which kind of, very, yeah, we do understand each other, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the language, uh, we, we really always try to get artists from the site into the group. So when we work in Italy to try to get the Italian artists or, Swedish or whatever, so because they know uh, the situation, the place best. Uh, and also because of the language. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, for example. I mean, it was really we didn't really expect this, but uh, the project in Portugal, in Porto, which is really a big city. And the people do not speak English there. And we only had one. We were three from Austria, and we only had one. We wanted to have two, only one uh, from the side. And this is nearly not to manage because you 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 have to call, and you can't always use one. And they call there, call there, write, make an answer. This is really uh, this is so. It, uh, yeah, was not possible to have. Uh, we wanted to have two, but I don't know why it didn't work that uh, they g don't give us the second one. Um, so the in these cases, it's better to have the bigger group from the side and only one or two from uh, from us. Yeah, if there is where because we do not speak Portuguese. Yeah. yeah, and we didn't. I really thought they speak English. I really thought because it was, I mean, it's I a mean big city, yeah. and, and even in Israel, it was sometimes a problem. Yeah, but this is uh, this is another. This was also in the Netherlands because it was about migrants, and the migrants always speak the language of the country they move. Yeah. Why should they 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 try to speak Hebrew and to learn Hebrew? Why should they s learn uh, English? Yeah. No. True. But this year, yeah, these are things you have always to think. Uh, yeah. <coughs> also in the Netherlands, I mean, all the uh, people in Netherlands speak English, but not the migrants. Yeah. Yeah? They speak Dutch. It's it's uh, everything. Yeah, you, you, yeah. L like uh, they in, in Italy, they speak Italian, but not English or French. Why should they learn? Yeah. 
So this is really important to have the people from the side, to the artists from the side in the project. Yeah. But yeah, but not. I mean, it's uh, the same like uh, ours. It's also like artists and create uh, strategies, but also not, of course, to have the knowledge of the site and the language. But not only as a tra translator. Do you say translator? Or interpreter, not interpreter. No? Not only for this purpose, but yeah, of course, also for this purpose. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we don't feel squeezed. <laughs> you don't feel squeezed. <laughs> no, it was Are strange. You sure? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, this is uh, this is always uh, make it makes us always uh, yeah. get the questions yeah. and then statements from the others. It's very important. And yeah. I always have the same time, you know, to consider again and think about all these different yeah. questions and what, what is really then what do I really think about it? It's, it's, it helps us a lot. Yeah. So I really want to thank you for uh, like uh, supporting uh <laughs> us in this uh, shift. Uh, today we were supposed to have uh, a workshop, but uh, we didn't have the conditions to have some practical um, working groups. There, there are not groups, <laughs> but I'm sure there are thousands and thousands of people <laughs> <laughs> online. <laughs> 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 Again, in their pyjama. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, f the, la the last two weeks have been uh, extremely inspiring for uh, for Vessel and for all the people that uh, uh, have attended the, the, the seminars and the workshops. And uh, I think that this is just the perfect way to uh, finish this uh, this experience. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We really we are. As we said, we're really honored and it is really, really great. And I hope we stay in touch and maybe get in the one or the other project would be really, really great. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Passa l'italiano e grazie mille ad arti, grazie mille ai laboratori dal basso e grazie a tutti i docenti che hanno partecipato. E presto avremo i video online, probabilmente dissemineremo le fantastiche eh, esperienze che abbiamo condiviso in questo posto attraverso testi, attraverso eh, vari strumenti, adesso cercheremo di capire insieme al team di Vessel. E, grazie mille per essere stati con noi e aver condiviso tutto questo. Grazie mille.